Welcome to this QuickBooks Online tutorial for beginners on how to use locations. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. Uh, first things first, before we get started, hey, if this video is helpful, please like the video, share it, and also subscribe to my channel. Also, when you want to get your personal QuickBooks questions answered, head over to the QuickBooks University at qbuniversity.org. So when you become a member over there, I answer all of your personal questions. QuickBooks questions. Okay, so let's get started. We're on the home screen of QuickBooks Online. This is a sample company file, Craig's Design and Landscape and Services. Now, a feature in QuickBooks Online that a lot of people don't really know about is called locations. Uh, you, you, you know, you have classes in QuickBooks, which is really like a department or, you know, you might have retail, wholesale that you want to track. Locations is a little bit different. This is different physical locations for your business. So we have clients that use this function in QuickBooks Online because they have multiple locations. Uh, it could be, um, you know, they have different businesses that are all within one consolidated company. And so they have a location set up for each of their companies. Uh, some people have multiple retail locations or, you know, whatever kind of locations. You can set these up so you can tag all your transactions for each of those locations. And therefore, you can see how each of those locations is doing. Some might be profitable, some might not be, but that helps you really dig down and find out, hey, what's going on in my business? So that if there's a problem with one, you can figure it out and pinpoint where that problem is. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do in your QuickBooks Online file is you wanna go up to the gear icon and go over to account and settings. And you're gonna see here, you've got the various options. You wanna go down to advanced. And you're gonna see right here where it says track locations. I've got this on, okay? And the location label is just location. All right, so you can change this, you know, property, store, whatever it is, you can do location. We're gonna leave it as location for this. So we're gonna save this and we're gonna say done. Most likely by default, yours is gonna be off. So if you wanna turn this on, you need to go into the preference of the accountant settings there and change that. All right, so the next thing we want to do is you want to go up and you want to define what locations you have. Okay, so we're going to go back to the gear icon and you're going to go to the lists. So where it says all lists and you should see an option here for locations. So click on locations and we want to add new. So there's no locations in here right now. And so we want to add a new one. All right, so this one is Let's see, we're gonna say um, uh, Rockford Store, all right? Uh, it's not a sublocation, uh, different title for sales forms, location has different company name, no. Different address, no. Uh, let's see, let's see, different phone number. Yeah, you know, you could do that. You can check off some of these and you can enter these so that if, you know, you are doing something specific like an invoice for a certain location, it's going to put that information. Or if you're just tracking this in your books and just sending one, you know, whether it's an invoice or whatever it is, you can just leave all these blank and just say Rockford store. Okay. So we have the first one here. Uh, let's see. We want to do another one and we want to say um, the Smith store. I'm very creative with my names here. All right, and then let's add one more, and we're going to call this the uh, the Columbia Store. Okay, so Columbia Store. So we have our three locations in this example. Okay, so now we have these locations set up, and I'm going to go back over to the dashboard, and we're just going to take a, a couple hypothetical transactions to show you how you're going to enter this. All right, so let's go to Expenses. And let's say we'll go up to new transaction here. Let's say we're going to enter a bill. All right, so let's get the bill screen up here. Okay, so you're going to see now there's a box here that says location, so we can specify what location. So let's say that we got a bill for the Rockford. We'll say books by Bessie, terms, net 15. I've got other videos on entering bills, bill date, due date, bill number. Let's put in a bill number. I always like to emphasize that that's important. And then the location, we're going to say the Rockford store and legal and professional fees, accounting, $75. Okay, it's not billable to a customer. All right, so all of these look good. 
and we're not going to save and schedule a payment, but let's add another one here. So we're going to do another one to Books by Bessie, and this time we want to put this to the Columbia store. So we're going to say Bessie did our books for Rockford and then for the Columbia store, and she built us separately for each one. So we want to break out that cost by location. All right, so again, we're going to say this one was $150 because the books were a little more complicated for Columbia. And let's see, we're going to say save and close. And next, what I want to do is I want to go in and let's see, I want to go and create an invoice. So let's create an invoice here in QuickBooks Online. Let's make this due to cool cars. Okay. So cool cars, Grace Parenti. Okay. 30 days, whatever. So we're going to pick a product service. So let's say this was design custom design and we're going to say that this was fifteen hundred dollars okay now we want to make this one to the rockford store okay and there's no discount no sales tax so we should be good to go and i am going to do a new one all right so this one we are going to say to dylan Sulfrank. all right one three no tags let's see what our product is here we're going to say installation and let's see, $50 an hour times 15 hours for his project, $750. This one we will make to the Smith store. All right, so let's save and close. All right, so let's take a look at what this does. We're gonna go over to the report. So we've got a couple of transactions here for the locations and we want to look for a profit and loss by location. All right, so if I pull this up, you can see now, if I've got the different location, very similar to class tracking, you can see that I've got my uh, design income in here, I've got the $750, and then I should have my bookkeeping down here by Bessie, accounting $150 and $75, okay? So you can see it's a very easy way, if you have multiple locations for your business, uh, you can use this to great effect so that you can start to see how the business is doing or how these different locations are doing for the overall business. And then you can see uh, the totals here, it's gonna consolidate it all. Now, in this situation, because uh, location tracking wasn't used, you're gonna see not specified, okay? And that means that there was not a location specified on these past transactions. So this can be a little bit of a burden if you wanna go back and change everything to the correct location. Uh, but it is great to set this up, whether you know it's the beginning of the year, or you know you're just starting out in quickbooks it's a great function to use hey any comments any questions please feel free to leave those below i do answer brief questions here on youtube but i answer very full one-on-one -on -one support questions over at the quickbooks university that website is qbuniversity.org